Barneseca Arena on the campus of St. John's University in Jamaica, Queens. We've got the Red Storm and the Providence Friars in a matinee on this Friday morning. A couple of teams in need of a win as we take a look at the Big East standing. St. John's in the middle of the pack. Three and three right now. Tied for sixth place with Seton Hall. Providence had a very good non-conference season, but still looking for their first win in conference. Hello everyone, I'm Pat O'Keefe. It is great to be joined by the former St. John's star, Sky Lindsay. It is Kids Day here inside Carnesecca Arena. We love that. We've got two teams, Sky, that got off to good starts, but both needing a win this afternoon. Pat, both teams not happy with their performance as of late. St. John's losing their last three games, and Providence losing all five of their Big East games. So both groups looking to get back on the winning side of things, and they want to do so today in front of 5,000 screaming elementary school kids. Last year they split the series, one of those games going down to an overtime round here in Carnesecca Arena, and so they're going to be a very passionate game in front of a very loud group. Yeah, these two teams played Kids Day last year and it was loud in here. Now St. John's has a much improved offense this season. They've really gotten a boost from a newcomer, Alyssa Alston, a transfer from Ole Miss. She's been playing spectacular, Pat, coming in off a 19-point performance in their loss at the ball. She's a feisty guard who knows how to get to the basket with her lightning-fast speed and will knock down the three off the trail in transition. And she'll likely be matched up a lot with Kayla Webb, the sophomore point guard for Providence, their second leading scorer, having a strong second season for the Friars. Pretty similar game to Alyssa Alston, so it'll be a lot of fun watching the 5-6 point guard and Alston going at it today. She's averaging 11.4 points per game, hit 14 in their last game versus Creighton, and 12 of those 14 points coming from behind the three. 71st all-time meeting between St. John's and Providence. The Friars 0-5, the Johnnies 3-3 three three in Big East play. Coming up next, your starting lineups, and we get going from Carnesecca Arena. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. And we're back here at Carnesecca Arena, just about set for the tip between St. John's and Providence, their first meeting of the season. It'll be Alicia Cavey and Mary Baskerville jumping it up. Starting lineups for the Red Storm, England and Alston. Quadat Shahapi having a terrific scoring season, now a junior from Staten Island. Alicia Cavey and Emma Nolan. Hoppy and Cavey could both score their 1,000th point in this game here this morning. Providence got off to a real good start, 9-3, non-conference play, 0-5 since Big East play began. Kayla Webb and Erlet Scott, Olivia Orlando, a good rebounder with Baskerville, a unanimous preseason All-Big East selection and Alyssa Geary. So we're ready to go here inside Carnesecca Arena. KB and Baskerville, a distinct size advantage for Baskerville, and the tip is controlled by the Friars. Chance of defense from the young crowd here already on Kids Day. Deliberate possession for Providence. And Earl lets Scott, a Brooklyn native, miss fires on her first attempt. And Scott getting the start today does not start often and coming off a big 14-point game in their loss. A little defensive miscommunication there, and Tiana England has the first two points of the game for the Red Storm. England only four points versus DePaul, but she has a new role this year, Pat. She doesn't have to do much, too much of the scoring because they have Hoppy, they have Bailey, they have girls that can put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop and so playing more of the point guard pass first role this season. And her minutes are down, and that's probably a good thing because the last couple of years, they basically needed her on the floor for 36, 37 minutes a game. Yes, they relied on England a lot. This year, a lot of pressure off of her shoulders. Good rebound by KB and a good start for the Red Storm. Providence 0 for 2 from the field. Get that 
England, now a redshirt junior. Missed her first season with an injury. Has been a really productive player her entire career here in Queens. And Alston, you featured her at the top of the broadcast. Puts it on the floor that time. And that's what we spoke about before the game. She's only 5'6", but she's not afraid to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. And that time, found an open lane and went right to the hole. Really good score. Averaged 14 points a game in the SEC for Ole Miss as Olivia Orlando gives Providence its first two points of the game. And that's what Providence has to do, Pat. They have to get the ball down low to their post players. Orlando, the 5'10 junior that time, and they have the height advantage. I know Coach Crawley wanted to take advantage of that. Jim Crowley in his fourth season at Providence. He's done a nice job getting this program headed in the right direction. One of their best seasons in years last year when they went 19 and 16 and reached the Sweet 16 of the WNIT. A lot of size on the floor for Providence to be getting a huge size advantage, in fact, for the Friars against St. John's. You have Baskerville, you have Orlando, you have Alyssa Geary as well, but St. John's doing a good job defensively to start. Yes, beautiful job that time by Nolan, the freshman, to stay with Basker Baskerville and force her to take a tough shot. And Baskerville is a big time player for Providence. She gets a lot of points for this group, and so they're going to try to get her hot and early. Mary Baskerville still just a sophomore. Really came on about the midway point of her freshman season last year. KB working against Geary, shifty move inside. Hoppy a long time with the dribble on this possession. Crossover and draws the foul against Erlette Scott on the floor. And that time Hoppy just having to try to create into something on her own because you can see a bit of miscommunication and St. John's right now offensively, Farley was not aware of what the play Hoppy was trying to run. So Sophia Widmeyer check in, a sophomore from Nova Scotia. Replacing Earlette Scott. Farley remains on the floor for the Red Storm, and here's Alston. Kadeja Bailey has also come on for the first time for the Johnnies. And Webb grabs the long rebound. Webb tried to pop open for a moment. 
Nice shovel pass inside. Kevin Bristow's first attempt, no good. Neither is the second. Rebound tapped, and nice hustle by Kayla Webb to retain possession for the Friars. Good job by Billy to stay with it that time and contest that shot, but even better job by Providence to keep that possession. That pass off the mark as Widmeyer was trying to find a posting, Alyssa Geary. And a choppy start to begin here at Karnaseka Arena. Providence a 6-4 lead over St. John's. Timeout on the floor midway through quarter number one. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Kids Day here inside Karna Seca Se Arena, excuse me, thousands of them in attendance on this Friday morning. Always a fun atmosphere. Pat O'Keefe, Sky Lindsay joining you. Providence an early 6-4 lead over St. John's. Early impressions from this one. Providence seems to be doing what they want offensively. Yes, Providence, they are taking advantage of their strengths. And in this game against St. John's, their strength is their size and their post play. And so far, in this first half of the first quarter, they've been feeding their posts every time down the floor. And St. John's trying to give them a taste of their own medicine. They go inside to Farley, who comes up short. All points coming in the paint so far. Four points in the paint for each team, plus a couple of free throws for the Friars as Kevin Bristow misfires again, second opportunity, and Orlando gives Providence a four-point lead. Kodasha Hoppy, catch and shoot from the wing. And she's on the board here this morning. And Hoppy's been quiet. That's her first bucket for the game, and that's a hand that Coach Crowley does not want to get hot, because Hoppy can put up numbers and fast. St. John's leading score, 17.3 a game. Here's Alston, another of their top scorers. And she was tied up, driving to the basket, and a foul on the play called against the Friars. And Alyssa Geary. Actually, it's against Olivia Orlando. 
And Orlando's really been dominating so far in this game with four points, the high scoring. So Austin, she's a redshirt senior. She's smart. She knows Orlando's the one guarding her. She's going to try to attack her and get her in foul trouble and hopefully for St. John's, get her on the bench. Orlando is on the bench now after that personal foul. She's got four points already, as you mentioned, which is already above her season average of three and a half. So there's a little confusion as to whether or not Alston should be shooting free throws. But they say she was in the act of shooting and will be shooting two fouls. So four straight points for the Red Storm. Alston from New Haven, Connecticut, about an hour and a half or so away from where we are in Queens, goes two for two from the line, an excellent free throw shooter at 78% on the season. And Pat, this game in front of all these screaming elementary school kids can really test a athlete's focus, especially on the free throw line. You will not, will not be quiet as you're taking free throws today. That ball bounces into the hands of Kayla Webb who pans the three, she's 42% from downtown and the Friars back on top by two. Nice drive by Alston, and she's going to get herself to the free throw line once again. Another foul against Providence. And Alston really the only one focused on attacking the rim every time. And believe it or not, one of the smallest players on the floor that's getting to the rim. First foul against Fatima Lee, uh, another New York City native on this Providence team. They've got four New York City kids. Lee, the latest one to join the program, a freshman from right here in Queens. In Providence, they have Coach Priscilla Edwards, who actually used to coach for St. John's University. I grew up with Coach Edwards. She's from the New York area, and so able to recruit and get some of those New York Big Apple players to come on down to Providence. Yeah, she's a big part of what Providence does recruiting-wise. She played for Jim Crowley and has now been his assistant coach for several seasons. He's running for the red score by Louisa Davey. The place he's on this almost And there she is, moving up the ranks as an assistant coach for the Friars. We're all knotted at 11 here, first quarter, Parnaseca Arena. They played a wild game, Providence and St. John's did last year. It was also on Kids Day, also an 11 a.m. tip. It went to overtime, and a nice hesitation move by another of those New York City kids, Chanel Williams from the Bronx. Williams, he's also a feisty player that's not afraid to get to the rim. You can see the energy she's brought to the floor as soon as she touched the floor today. Hoppy from the corner, lays it off to Bailey, the Big East leader in field goal percentage. England will restart the possession, gets a hard screen from Farley. Here's Bailey off the mark from the corner, and Williams draws the foul on the rebound. It's against Alicia Cabe. And I'm not sure that's the shot Coach Tardamella wanted out of that possession. Bailey not known for her three-point shooting, and that time settling for the long-distance three. Bailey just 31% from downtown. Mentioned her field goal prowess, 62% on the season from the floor. Johnny's packing it in defensively. Baskerville back on the floor. Crowley does a good job limiting her minutes. She's very effective when she's out there. They're looking to post. Nice job by Katie to get her hand on it and steal the pass from Williams. Out to Hoppy. You can see Hoppy really wanted that three, and she knows she's so close to that big milestone, her 1,000th point, and only a sophomore, and so Hoppy really looking to get her game going, and quickly. Well, that would have given it to her. She's two points away from 1,000 for her career here at St. John's. KB, meanwhile, three points away. So both milestones imminent for a couple of the St. John's veterans. Alston handling the ball with Tiana England on the bench for the Red Storm. And great job by this Providence defense, really forcing St. John's 
to play offense the entire possession and go for a Hail Mary at the very end of the shot clock. Yeah, forcing Kadeja Bailey to create off the dribble, not usually a big part of her game. Baskerville out and running, contact, and it's an offensive foul against Mary Baskerville. And smart play by KB. She knew she had her feet set, was not afraid to take that charge, and Baskerville getting caught, just lowering her shoulder just enough to get the offensive. And Baskerville back to the bench. And Heaven Bristow as well. Alyssa Geary back in up front for the Friars. And Andrea Cooper has checked in, a junior from Edmond, Oklahoma, for the first time. So good job defensively by KB. St. John's trailing by two minutes ago here in the first quarter. And England's been out for a while, Pat, forcing Alyssa Alston to have to move over to the one position and bring the ball up the floor. Hoppy misfires on another three-point attempt. Cross-court pass to Orlando. Geary on the baseline, nice touch, and a four-point lead. And good, Hoppy did slide over and contest the shot, but Geary just had the height advantage, able to just shoot right over Hoppy. Nice answer for St. John's out and running. Bailey finishes. Final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock is off. Chanel Williams checking the play call from her head coach, Jim Crowley. Down to three seconds. They dump it inside to Geary, and she traveled with 1.9 on the clock. Red score ball. And Farley and Geary really battling down low, but Farley being smart, just keeping her hand straight up. Quick inbound to Alston, a couple of dribbles off the mark, and Providence has a two-point lead after the first. 15-13, kids day here at Carneseca Arena. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get you. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Back here in Queens, St. John's trailing Providence 15-13 as we get set for the start of the second quarter. St. John's Sky shorthanded today, their second leading scorer, the freshman Leilani Correa, not available to play today, on the bench with the team, but inactive, and that's a big loss the season that she's been having. Absolutely, and I know Coach Tardamala is a little bit nervous coming into this game knowing one of his top scorers, only a freshman, but unable to play today, and that's a big loss for them on the offensive end. Averaging 13.8 points a game. This is the first game that she's missed this season and is actually coming off her first starting assignment, which was on Sunday in St. John's loss at DePaul. And 
Here's the thing about Correa, she can fill it up with the best of them. Two 30-point games already this season. Just the third player in St. John's history to do that. She's just a freshman. I'll tell you what, Pat, she's going to be a lot of fun to watch this year in her career here at St. John's because we're not going to get to see it today, but she is an amazing basketball player. Emma Nolan back on the floor. St. John's first trip down the court of this second quarter and a tough shot by Alston near the top of the key puts the Johnnies on top by one. And Pat Alston can just do no wrong so far in this first half. That time wasn't even really open, but nice dribbling move to get that three-point shot off and knock it down. No wrong indeed. Nine of St. John's 16 points here in the beginning of the second quarter. Playing a lot of point guard as well as England remains on the St. John's bench. Nolan has her pass deflected, and that's an offensive foul as the freshman was out of control on the drive. Nolan, it's not really her game. She's a great perimeter shooter in the 10, 15 footer range, and that time put the ball on the floor trying to attack, but just not one of her strengths, and great job by Providence to take the charge, and that time it was Cooper in the right spot at the right time. And Nolan back to the bench, that's her second foul. Raven Farley replaces her. Joe Tartamella has more options on that St. John's bench than he did in recent years. Remember last year they went six, seven deep. This year, a bit of a deeper rotation, even despite their second leading scorer, Correa, being out today. Yeah, he has some great guards, a lot of young players, but they're athletic and they're feisty and they're all interchangeable in that one, two, and three position. On the other side, Jim Crowley has a pretty deep rotation as well. Nobody plays huge minutes on this Providence team. Farley battling for the offensive rebound, and it will stay with St. John's. Well, the original call was St. John's basketball. And now they change it, and it goes to Jim Crowley in Providence. His fourth season as their head coach, 23rd season as a college head coach, a record of 50 and 63 with the Friars. And again, last year, 19 wins. They beat Xavier in the Big East Tournament and then lost to DePaul in the quarterfinals before a nice run to the Sweet 16 in the WNIT. Deep three from the corner off the mark from Earlette Scott. Here comes England just back into the game. Nice dribble drive by England, off balance, however, and we're going the other way. England loved that move, and Williams was ready for it and waiting for that lefty layup that England could not make. And Geary well off the mark on an open look. Williams gets it back, floater from the foul line, grabbed by KB. And Williams that time could have just taken her time and did a nice pull-up jumper instead of going for that tough runner floater, and that time a little bit too quick and couldn't connect on that one. Close games, these teams are used to playing them against each other. Each of the last four times they have met, the game has been decided by five points or fewer. And that includes last year, a 67 to 66 overtime win for Providence in which they got the game winning point on a free throw after a questionable call when time expired in overtime. Yes, I remember that game in both squads. As you mentioned, a lot of history between the two. Usually every time they meet, it goes down to the very end. We have to remember also, they had a week to prepare for each other and Coach Priscilla Edwards used to play, used to coach for St. John's University and Coach Jordan Nicholas used to coach for Providence. So both staffs know each other's plays and their sets and this, their style of play pretty well. And you've got to think the players know each other, too. We mentioned Providence has four players from New York City in their rotation. St. John's roster always stacked with players from New York City, like you were, Sky. So you figure the players have grown up playing against each other, too. That's right. New York City basketball, playing in the, the street tournaments, in the parks, in the summertime. Everyone has that connection. And you're right, Pat. They do know each other pretty well. Both teams have gone cold the last few trips down court. Here's a look for Alston, and she's had the hot hand now with a dozen points in the first half. And 
Pat, these type of games is bringing back memories, playing in front of all these screaming school kids, but this is the first time for Alyssa Austin playing in this type of environment, and you could barely tell because she's been just killing it. Defensive breakdown there led to a wide open layup for Andrea Cooper, and we're all tied at 19. Nice look from Hoppy to KB in the corner, but it's an oh, offensive foul on the pass off, wave off the basket. And Hoppy, you can see, not happy with that call. Felt she got the pass off in time, but you have to love the defensive effort by Providence. They are not afraid to do the intangibles. They're not afraid to get their body and hit the floor and take those charges, and that's why Providence is tied right now with St. John's. Kevin Bristow, a freshman from New York City, posting up. Cooper misfires on the drive. Little high step from Tiana England, keeps that dribble. Hoppy looking to create, up top for KB. Right down the lane for KB off the glass of it. In fact, Katie was able to get that lane to the hoop because of that jab step, faking as if she's going to go left and went right. And a lot of players forget about that old school jab step play. It works a lot, and KB that time showing us. Bristol lost her footing and another offensive foul in a first half of offensive foul calls. KB draws another one. And Bristol that time just trying to force it, really had nowhere to go. And great job by KB to just slide her feet and create that charge. Good defensive stand for St. John's. Good job by Alicia KB. St. John's has a two point lead midway through the second. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. together great voices ready to start great energy we're getting excited about what we do all right you know how together you are you know how hard you're gonna work but you also know how good you are let's go show them one two three together this is our time when we bring it we bring it together and we all locked in we coming back in this locker room with people for victory that's the big east way the 2020 women's basketball tournament at Wintrust arena get tickets now my parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
the amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Just back to live action, a little matinee action here on the Big East Digital Network. St. John's and Providence, their first meeting of the season. St. John's has lost three straight. Providence 0-5 to start the Big East portion of their schedule after a very successful 9-3 run through their non-conference schedule. And Sky, it's been the Alyssa Alston show so far, that possession notwithstanding. And Alston should have just gone through the basket straight with her left hand and tried to lean in and create a foul instead stop because Cooper did slide her feet really well defensively and forced Austin to take an out of control shot. She's got a dozen points. She hasn't missed from downtown and she's helped lead St. John's to a two point advantage. Bristow stepped back from inside the paint. Hoppy battling for the rebound. Chased down by Cooper. Earl Let Scott from South Shore High School in Brooklyn. The powerhouse program of New York City girls high school hoops right now ties it at 21. Coast to coast for Tiana England. And a timeout by Jim Crowley, and he is not happy with that defensive possession. That's right, you know, Scott did a good job of talking and getting that layup in, but you cannot, there's no time to stop and celebrate. You have to get back on defense, and if not, St. John's looking to run right back down and get a quick basket of their own. That's the second time we've seen St. John's take the ball out of the basket and get a fast break opportunity before it was Kadeja Bailey. And this time, nobody steps up to guard England. And I can imagine that's exactly what Coach Crowley is talking about. Great job offensively. You got the basket, but you have to quickly turn around and get back on defense. This is a close game. Every time they play each other, it's a close game. So you cannot afford to even relax for not even one possession. Joe Tartamella, usually very well dressed, well dressed again today, but a little more casual than usual for Coach Tate. Must be because of that 11 a.m. game right. time. <laughs> Different day clock for Tartamella in his eighth season here in Queens. A lot of success in this program, and a coach you know very well. That's Coach Tartamella back when I was playing, and Kim Bonjarico was the head coach. He was only the assistant coach. And so much fun watching eight, nine, ten years later. He's now the head coach and leading this program. And when you're a player, the assistant coaches are a lot of times the players who you really form a bond with, right? Because they're the ones rolling up the sleeves and doing a lot of the drill work with you. Yeah, and believe it or not, Coach Tardamella used to practice with us. He was out there running the drills, playing against us, sweating just like the rest of us. And so you have to have a lot of respect for those players, for those coaches that also get on the floor and sweat and play with the players like Coach Tardamella did. So how was his game? He actually was pretty good. He gave us a run for our money. He definitely went hard every practice against us. Baby jumps the route to the basket, misfires, and Unique Drake is there to clean it up. And Drake, she's only a freshman, but she's smart. She knew not to assume KB was going to make that layup. She still ran the play and was right there to finish it and put that put back in. Just to finish the point on Tartamella, a baseball and basketball player at Smithtown High School on Long Island, so a good high school athlete. Wholesale substitutions for Providence. Jim Crowley still not happy with the unit that was just on the floor, sending five players in. Four of them on the floor now. Baskerville's gonna try to finish this three-point play. And good job by Baskerville to finish that three-point play. And Crowley just not in the right spot, not boxing her out and fouling her. Unique Drake has it poked away and a jump ball as she went up for the shot. Stays with St. John's with less than three minutes on the clock. And in this type of game, Pat, you know, Coach Crowley, he has the right idea. Keep substituting and putting fresh legs out there. He needs them to be energetic against this St. John's group because we know it's going to go down to the very end of this game. And that five-person group who he was not happy with that he just took out of the game, four of them were starters. The only starter on the floor right now for Providence, Alyssa Geary. KB from the top of the key. <laughs> 
England got her hands on it. Still 10 seconds on the shot clock. A lot of movement offensively with Providence. You can see their sets that they're running. They're trying to constantly keep players off the ball, moving. But St. John's kind of looking like they already knew the play and knew where that next pass was going to go. That's why Hoppy was able to get her hand on it. Nice pass inside from Williams. Good defense by Farley, and the shot clock expires. Officials didn't hear the buzzer, now they do. And a good defensive stand for St. John's. And it's no surprise, it is loud in this gym today, Pat, and to the point where the referees cannot even hear the shot clock go off. But great job by St. John's to play complete defense for the full 30 second shot clock and force that turnover. 5,000 strong. Filling the seats inside Parnasek Arena. School children from throughout the borough of Queens. Great atmosphere. Farley turnaround off the glass, no good. And Farley, a transfer from LSU and Finally getting to play her season with St. John's. Couldn't play that first half of the season. And you can see she's still just trying to get in the, mo in the mood of things and trying to figure out exactly where does she fit on this St. John's team. So Chanel Williams, a junior now, out of Monsignor Scanlon High School in the Bronx, just over the Throgs Neck Bridge from where we are. Goes to the line for a couple of shots. A 77% free throw shooter. And as usual, St. John's Providence, a close game. That's what we have right now. Williams goes two for two. KB back in to replace Farley. So Joe Tardinella going small on this offensive possession. You know what? We have to also remember that Correa is not playing. And so St. John's keeping this game tied up into the first half. And without their second leading score, that's pretty good for St. John's. They're stepping it up. Hoppy's had a quiet first half and shuffled the feet there for the travel. And happy right there telling the ref, I didn't move my foot. And something you have to play close attention to as a player, you cannot move that pivot foot. You can't even afford to drag it, which is what the ref is saying Happy did that time. She's really had a breakout season this year, though. Uh, absolutely. Only a sophomore and two points from getting her 1,000th career point. Not many sophomores in the nation can say they've done that. Here's Geary in the post working against KB. Hoppy grabs the rebound. She's averaging 18 a game in games here inside Karnaseka Arena, but turns it over for the second straight possession. Williams, wild shot. Geary follows, and Bailey corrals the rebound. Johnny's on the run. Austin right at the defender, no good. Back and forth we go with not a lot to show for it offensively. St. John's averages a shade over 75 points per game this season. They're about to enter halftime and they're sitting at 25. Webb from the baseline, too strong. Shot clock is off. We'll see what the Johnnies do on this possession. Alston's had the hot hand in the first half. Here's Hoppy with four seconds. Alston over to Hoppy. Off the back of the rim, and we head into the locker room tied at 25. In a tough end of the first half of both groups. Got a little bit cold towards the end, but a great first half overall for both teams, Pat, keeping it tied. As usual, when these two teams get together, it will be decided in the second half, or perhaps even beyond. St. John's and Providence tied at 25 at the break. St. John's University is New York, through and through.
While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. Tied at 25, Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis breaking down everything Big East for women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by the reigning Big East Player of the Week, Marcus Selena The Marquette Golden Eagles are 3-2 in Big East play, coming off of a 2-0 weekend beating at St. John's and Seton Hall, as I'm now joined by the Big East Player of the Week, Selena Lott. Selena, your team lost your first two conference games. However, you've now won three straight Big East games. Head coach Megan Duffy said your execution has been different throughout these. What has been the difference in your execution? Um, honestly, it's just determination and we all have to stay humble. Like our teammates, it's like a, a player led team. So our coaches try to stay out of it as much. And then we just had to get an extra work just to be better. You had a career high 34 points in your win over St. John's offensively. How were you able to have so much production? Honestly, I don't even see it as much as my coaches do. So my coaches like give me highlights of like when I can attack or like whenever I come off on the bench. My coach, uh, Skeet, will tell me and be like, this is what you have. Like You have your little pull-up game. You have the three. You can drive. So I just take her advice whenever. Head coach Megan Duffy also mentioned the fact that this season a lot of teammates have been stepping up. When you look to your game against Seton Hall on Sunday, Lauren Van Kloon didn't have as much of an offensive game as she usually does. And then you have freshman Cameron Taylor stepping up with her first career double-double. How much is that a testament to what this team is about this season? Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the beauty of our team. Like, we all can do different parts, and we all have our talents. But it's just when one's down, one has to step up. So everybody knows their role, and just attack it. Selena, just saying it right there, everyone knows their role. What is your role on the team this season? I would just say be more of a vocal leader and, like, trying to tell people, like, what positions to be in on defense. And then everybody kind of has the same role. We all tell each other what to do. We just have to take that into consideration. You're one of the upperclassmen this year, and you also come back with a lot of experience. You started on last year's team amongst all of that high-powered talent. How has that experience helped you into this year with the leadership that you have on the court? Um, it definitely has helped because like, I knew like, how other teams played and what we had to like, look forward to, like scouting-wise. But everybody was ready. Who is the funniest on the team? Funniest on the team? Probably Altia. Ooh. Why yeah. is she so funny? She's interesting. She's different. She's so different. She loves to fish. She loves country music. But, like, at the same time, like, I don't know. She'll just always make a side comment that will make you laugh in the wrong times. <laughs> so if she loves country music at practice, at a home game, on your playlist, is there at least one country song that we can expect to be on that playlist? Probably not on my playlist, but definitely on hers. <laughs> What's your playlist like? What kind of music we have in that? Um, I listen more of like hip hop and R&B. Mm -hmm. Favorite yeah. pregame song? Probably Whoa Right Now by Lil Baby. Can you sing for us a little bit? Oh. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't, I don't know all the lyrics. <laughs> fair. That is very, very fair. <laughs> Selena, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network.
We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here at Carnesecca Arena Kids Day, you can see the wall behind us. St. John's and Providence tied at 25. Kind of an uneven first half offensively, especially Scott. That's right. Both teams doing a good job though, keeping it tied, but kind of oh. more balanced scoring for Providence. A lot of players have scored at least four points, and St. John's has been mostly Lisa Austin, who has the game high 12 points for her. Austin clearly leading the way in this game. She had the hot hand to begin for the first half. Uh, Austin, two for two from downtown with 12 points, 12 of St. John's 25 points. Now when Providence was successful, especially early, they were successful throwing the ball inside. They did a great job of getting the ball down low to Baskerville who has four points, Orlando four points, as well as Gary who has four points. I want to see them do that a lot more in the second half continue doing what worked for them in that first quarter and feed the post down low. One of the things Providence needs to tighten up is their transition defense. Two or three times we saw Providence score and then St. John's take it out of the basket and get a quick hoop on the other end. And that's what St. John's wants to do. They want to attack the rim. They want to. They want the defense to not be ready, not set up, and get some easy buckets. As for St. John's, Alston with those 12 points to lead the way. A very balanced attack for Providence. Nobody has more than four points, but they have five players with at least four points. Shooting percentages, 32 to 30 for St. John's. Providence, a tough first half from downtown and a rebounding advantage for the Friars. You would expect that as Providence has a size advantage over the Red Storm. So 25-25 is the halftime score. Providence was just four for 18 shooting in that second quarter. Let's we'll see if they can turn things around as we get you set for the second half coming up from Carter Second Arena. Not gonna want to miss this. All right, we gotta be all in, all in. All right, but we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other, and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on me. 
He just made me believe no matter what you do, anything is possible. I think the legacy that he put in place means a lot to me because I always think about where we came from as people of color, as athletes of color, and I just try to make sure that whatever I'm doing now in the present is going to set up those for the future. Being in the Big East is so diverse. Being at DePaul University is so diverse. So to come along and to share our talents is one of the messages that Martin Luther King shared with us, that we can't all come together and be as one. His willingness to sacrifice himself and you know fight for others, that goes a long way for the future and anybody who wants to stand up for, for change and equality. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. watching Providence Women's Basketball on Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're gonna feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think thrive and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you.
Third quarter about to begin here inside Karnasek Arena. Providence basketball, St. John's and the Friars all tied at 25. And Paul, I always love to see how two teams come out after their halftime break, being uh, having the chance to regroup, listen to both coaches, and see what they do differently from the start for the second half. Well, Providence got the ball into the hands of its leading scorer, Mary Baskerville. She couldn't finish inside. Baskerville had four points in the first half. A host of Friars leading the way with four. Geary scoring four, Earlette Scott, Olivia Orlando, and Chanel Williams off the bench as KB's follow-up is blocked by Geary and a jump ball. It'll stay with St. John's. Good hustle there by Alicia KB. KB, great job, as you said, hustling, getting that rebound, but Providence, they're smart defensively. They know to just keep their arms and their hands straight up, and that time getting the clean block. And there was a minor issue with the clock that our official Bob Enterline checked out at the scorer's table. Seems to have been resolved, so back to action we go. Nice bounce pass inside for Nolan, and she draws the foul going to the basket. Hoppy setting her up. Yeah, nice pick and roll for Nolan and Hoppy, working with each other, and a tough bounce pass to get it in the hands of Nolan, but Nolan found a way to catch it and get the ball up there and draw a foul. And the freshman, Emma Nolan, who had a scoreless first half in four minutes, goes to the line to draw the second foul against Mary Baskerville. So the first point of the second half comes via the free throw line. And in a game, in a low scoring game like this, Pat, free throws matter. Well, St. John's five for six from the line here today with that Nolan miss. St. John's a good free throw shooting team, a very good free throw shooting team, 77% on the season. Good ball movement here, Geary for three. Orlando trying to chase down the long rebound. Instead, it's ahead to England on the run and a three-point Johnny Green. Austin, such a smart player, stuck with it, got that loose ball, and did a nice, the perfect lead pass for England to get those two points. Orlando on the baseline with a size advantage, posting up Tiana England. Nice turnaround off the glass. And Orlando, she's 5'10", she's smart. She saw the mismatch and went right at England. Once again, St. John's was looking to push after a made Providence basket. That time didn't work. So the Friars with the ball, and now the lead as Earlette Scott takes the lane. I'm not even sure Scott was expecting to be that wide open. Caught the ball, did a crossover, and for some reason, St. John's defense just got right out of her way and gave her the easiest bucket of the game, perhaps. Back-to-back -back baskets for Providence. England finds a hole the other way, and St. John's back on top by a pass. England, she was smart. She gave, put the ball in her right hand for the scoop layup because she saw Gary, six foot four, right there trying to block that shot. Eight points now for Tiana England, St. John's second leading scorer on the day. Emma Nolan picks up this personal foul. That will be number three for her. And with that, Raven Farley gets up off the St. John's bench. And the, assignment, and Pat, the assignment down low for both Nolan and Farley to have to stay with Baskerville has been an ongoing battle this entire game down low. Orlando driving right down the lane and an offensive foul. And once again, it's Alicia KB stepping up to take the charge. And that just tells you the type of senior captain Alicia KB is. She's not afraid to sacrifice her body for her St. John's group. And that time, once again, helping England sliding over at the right time to take that charge. And that was a tough one at that. And a 
That foul was against Olivia Orlando, her second personal. Watch how KB taking that tough hit, hitting the floor hard, but earning St. John's a possession. And Olivia Orlando slow to get up after that collision with KB. And the reaction on her face indicates that she's in a good amount of pain as she's being helped off the floor by the trainer and Sophia Widmeyer, her teammate. And hopefully for Coach Crowley, Orlando is able to shake it off and get back in this game because she's been giving him great minutes so far today. A strong game for Olivia Orlando, but she's back on the trainer's table beyond the Providence bench as we return to live action St. John's the ball in a one-point lead. KB trying to catch it off the curl. Farley near the top of the K, hands it to Hoppy. Hoppy pulls up, and that's a thousand for her career here at St. John's. Hoppy, a nice off the dribble jumper, and that was top off the left side, and she's a righty in that time, making it look easy though. So Kodasha Hoppy needed five coming in, she's got it. 1,000 points for the Staten Island, New York native in her career at St. John's with a long way to go. And I'll tell you what, Pat, Providence, they did not make that easy for Hoppy. She had to work really hard for those five points. Here he uses the size advantage inside. So now Hoppy has her thousand. As Farley draws the foul against the double team. It's against Geary with Hoppy reaching her milestone, Alicia Cavey, one point away. She's sitting on 999 career points. And talk about the anxiety as a player to know that your family and friends have come to this game. This is possibly the game that you will hit your milestone and you know you're so close, but you're going against a strong defensive team like Providence. And you know, even though you're so close to getting it, you're still so far away because every possession, every time you have the ball in your hands for St. John's, Providence is going to make every shot a tough one. Kodasha Hoppy becomes the 25th player in the history of this program to score a thousand career points. Chanel Williams quickly up court. Kayla Webb waving her arms frantically, calling for the ball, and you see why. She had a good look from the corner, and Providence back on top. Yeah, Webb felt that one before she even had the ball. She knew if my teammates swing it quickly and give me the ball, I'm going to knock it down, just like Hoppy did on that one. Well, you wonder if Hoppy was pressing a little bit to get to the milestone, and you wonder now that she's got it, if she's going to start catching fire. Yeah, maybe she can loosen up a bit now. That pressure is off your shoulders. You hit the milestone. Now she just has to get out there and play in this second half of her group. Back-to-back -back threes for Providence and St. John's. Webb and then Hoppy. Johnny's by two. Really important game for both of these teams. Providence 0-5. High expectations this season. Nice bounce pass inside from Williams to Heaven Bristow. And we're tied at 36. And Katie that time just getting caught behind Bristow. And they're still getting an easy layup because Katie was just asleep for a moment. Alston, big first half, quiet second, has it taken away by Williams and looking to push. She has Webb on her left-hand side, catch and shoot for Kayla Webb. Long rebound, though, bounces into the hands of Bristow. Earlette Scott will restart the possession. Bristow working against KB, and another oh, offensive foul as KB moves her feet. And Bristow right in front of the ref on that baseline, using her elbow and her arm to push off of KB. And KB, she's smart. She knows how to sell the call. And that time selling it once again for another charge call. Three-point shooting picking up in the third quarter for both teams. St. John's and Providence were tied at halftime. but still tied now
St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. Together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Quadash Shahafi reaching a milestone here on her home floor. Her 1,000th career point, just continuing what has already been a standout career. And a very tough basket that was to get her 1,000th point off the dribble and right there knocking down a three. She has eight points in this game so far in 24 minutes. Providence has been doing a great job defending her, but you can see she's getting loose now in this second half, and let's see how she goes the rest of this game. And hang on to that sign, buddy, because you might need it in another minute or two. Alicia Cavey is one point away from 1,000 for her career, but congratulations to Kodasha, the 25th player in St. John's program history with 1,000 career points. She's been good since she got here. The Big East Freshman of the Year two years ago. And now leading the team in scoring. Here's KB to the basket. And she'll have an opportunity for her 1,000th on the free throw line. And you mentioned earlier, free throws matter, especially now for KB. And it's not going to be a quiet free throw attempt. It's very loud in this gym. And so KB is going to have to focus and see if she can knock these two down. 5,000 strong. Elementary and middle school students from across the borough of Queens here for Kids Day, Field Trip Day, an annual fun tradition that you and I always seem to be together for as well. Yes, we always get this fun game and it brings back so many memories from when I was playing here at St. John's from 07 to 11 and always a tradition for St. John's to have this game for the community and bring the kids out and the youth so they can get the opportunity to watch some great college basketball. Well, KB goes 0 for 2, so still sitting on 999. More importantly, St. John's, Providence tied at 36 until Geary finishes a tough shot inside to put the Friars back on top. Geary wide open. Farley was not aware that she was trailing and running that left-hand side of the floor, and she has to be aware. Hoppy pulls up from the free throw line. And 
Sky. I think we can assume that Olivia Orlando will not be returning to the game for Providence. Her right ankle is heavily wrapped in ice and she was just on crutches a moment ago as she returned to the Providence bench. And Orlando had four points in the game before she ended up being injured and a big loss for Coach Crowley and also St. John. They do not have their second leading scorer, Correa, on the floor as well. So both teams with a loss offensively. Leilani Correa, who's been so good in her first season for the Red Storm. There's Orlando on the bench. Geary, the sky hook from about 10 feet away was off the mark. England drives right at and right around Geary, and we're tied once again. England does a good job maneuvering her body. She has great body control while in the air, and she's able to hang in the air just long enough to finish those scoop layups against the bigs. Scott pulls up just inside the arc. KB corrals the rebound. England looks to push. Alston guarded by Williams. Here's a good look for Bailey from the far wing. Rattles it home. Johnny's up by three. Cooper leaving Bailey wide open behind that three-point line because as we mentioned, Bailey not known for her three-point shooting, but that time knocking it down right in front of her bench. Bailey last year named to the All Big East freshman team. Averaging a shade over seven points a game this season. Earlet Scott guarded by Kudasha Hoppy. Pass inside couldn't be handled. England looking to push. Around Williams. Now around Webb and she draws the foul going to the basket. On the floor is the ruling. Because when England gets the ball, there's no stopping her going end to end. She loves to go coast to coast and have that open floor to go where she wants to go. And that time Cooper knew, Williams, I'm sorry, knew, let me foul her early because if I don't, that's a quick two points for England. It is loud here. You saw the replay. The foul was on the blow by of Chanel Williams, the first defender. So Providence is in the penalty. So England will get two shots anyway. And Tiana England now with 12 points to lead the way along with Alyssa Alston. This might be the biggest lead in the game right now, Pat, and St. John's picking things up in the second half. Biggest lead for either team in this game is right now a five-point St. John's advantage. And we spoke about it earlier in the game. Last four games between these two teams have all been decided by five points or less. Williams pulls Providence within three as we approach the final minute of the third quarter. Entry pass is deflected and knocked out of bounds by Andrea Cooper with 11 seconds to shoot. Andrea Cooper, a junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Solid role player for this Friars team. Crossover from England looking underneath for Farley, but it was blocked from behind by Baskerville. Farley, six foot three, six foot four, but that time amongst two and three black Providence shirts, just the same height as her to contest that one. Scott a three from the wing. Nobody stops Tiana England, and she's got 14 points. It's almost impossible to stop her, Pat, when she has the ball in her hands in the open floor. That is an immediate coast-to-coast -coast for the speedy point guard, England. St. John's has its five-point lead back. The Johnnies have scored 20 points in this third quarter. We were tied at 25 at halftime. There's about a three-and-a-half-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Crowd really getting loud in here now on this defensive possession. Hoppy takes it away, but no, a jump ball before she could fully gain possession. So it will stay with Providence. Four seconds on the shot clock. 
and 7.7 .7 on the game clock. Let's see if Providence can possibly get the ball in Baskerville's hands and let her work for these last 7.7 .7 seconds. Hoppy thought she was off to the races. Well, let Scott just check back in. She'll inbound. And they do look for Baskerville and draws the foul. And that was the smartest play for Providence to do, the easiest play to do. Throw it up there, let Baskerville get up there and catch it, and let her work. And that time, Farley not playing under control, did dip her arm down at the last minute, and the ref caught it. Raven Farley had her hands up like this one I'm supposed to do. Baskerville just 58% from the line. Looked pretty good on that one. So 5.9 seconds on the clock. Shot clock obviously off. Plenty of time for St. John's to push it up four and get a good shot. If they can corral the rebound, which they do. Here's England peeking up at the clock. A good look for Hoppy. A better defensive play for Andrea Cooper as the third quarter comes to an end. So St. John's and Providence neck and neck throughout. A four point Red Storm lead as we head to the fourth. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're gonna feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. St. John's has a four point lead. Could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for that strong defensive play by Andrea Cooper to end the third quarter. That's nice hustle by Cooper to contest what could have been a made three. And you do not want St. John's to end that third quarter with the momentum. And so Cooper made sure they did not get that. And great job by her to get that clean block in the corner. And from the angle from which you and I are watching the court, it looked to both of us like Padasha Hoppy had a really good look at a three. And Cooper kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure England, even the bench, thought that was an automatic three-pointer for Hoppy, but not against. I've been saying it this entire game. It's not, nothing is easier than a defensive team like Providence. It's not afraid to do the intangibles and go the extra mile and get those defensive stops. So here we go, St. John's and Providence close once again. Their last four games have been decided by a total of 11 points, shooting better for both teams in that third quarter. They were both seven for 13 from the floor. St. John's outscoring the Friars 20 to 16 for this four point lead. A sloppy first possession for the Red Storm as they turn the ball over for their eighth turnover of the game. And now an offensive foul 
against the Friars and an illegal screen by Baskerville. Yeah, Alston running right into it. And an unfortunate call for Providence, and the last person they wanted to pick up a foul is Baskerville, and that's her third. Baskerville with five points and six rebounds. England had the hot hand in that third quarter. A series of drives and dashes to the basket. Hoppy pulls up. Webb is wide open on the far wing. Bailey couldn't handle the rebound. Webb diving to the floor for it. It's knocked out of bounds. Baskerville was there. Baskerville and Tiana England looked like they had a word or two for each other immediately separated. And the ruling on the floor was Providence ball. And we said in the intro, Pat, a very passionate game this was going to be in. You can see right there, it's the fourth quarter. It's getting down to the nitty gritty and every possession matters. You can see England and Baskerville fighting for it and having some words because passion, the passion is high right now. Started with the hoppy miss and then Baskerville grabs the rebound on this end. It looked like when England went to try to grab the ball, her arm got tied up with Baskerville's arm. And when Baskerville yanked it back, it yanked back England, and she turned around and seemed to take exception to that. Yes, a very scrappy possession that was. Bodies on the floor, elbows flying, but that's what you expect in the fourth quarter against, against two teams that every game they meet, even last year, it goes down to the very end, even overtimes. Here's the look again. Now they're gonna review this. I, I, it doesn't look like it was a lot. And first of all, anything that was going on, was, they were separated immediately. So they are gonna review it as they review most incidents like this, not to call this an incident per se, but both teams back to their bench. St. John's up by four. And we're in a bit of a holding pattern here as both coaches get a chance to regroup with their teams a minute and seven seconds into this fourth quarter. It may be a good opportunity for both teams to regroup. And you can see right now Coach Tardamella giving his players a word, a lot of words at that. And you can see he's not that satisfied right now with their performance. And he's telling them to keep your arms straight up. And Farley and the rest of the girls talking it through. St. John's looking to snap a three-game losing streak. They got off to a 3-0 start in Big East play after a very solid non-conference portion of the schedule as well when they went 7-3. But three straight games, their last loss at DePaul on Sunday, 74-69, in which they actually had a three-point lead entering the fourth. But we know how DePaul can go on one of those runs and fill it up in a hurry. DePaul outscored St. John's 27-19 in the fourth quarter to hand the Johnnies a third straight loss. That's right, and those three losses for St. John's, they feel those were all games within arm's reach, games they could have won that they let slip right through their hands, and so that's why I knew coming into today's game when they're back on their home floor, they was going to play with a lot of emotion and a lot of passion to finally break this three-game losing streak and try to get a win on their home floor. It's a two-game weekend homestand for St. John's. Creighton will be in here on Sunday at 2 p.m. The Blue Jays currently second place in the Big East, 12 and four overall, and four and one in the Big East Conference. As you look at the Red Storm upcoming schedule, three road games, Seton Hall, Villanova, and Georgetown, not an easy stretch. Neither is coming back home for DePaul and Marquette. Look, the bottom line is the league is so deep, it's very balanced, it's very talented. There aren't any easy games on the schedule. Yes, that is the bottom line. The Big East Conference is a strong conference, one of the best in the nation this year. And every game going in is going to be a tough, evenly matched game. And St. John's and Providence, a lot of basketball ahead of them. And so they're trying to get back on the winning end of things starting today. And as for Providence, and again, they're 0-5. 
A lot of close losses in conference play. They'll head to the other side of the Hudson River on Sunday for a game against Seton Hall, a 1 p.m. game. You can catch that here on the BETN. And then they head home, Butler and Xavier, before heading out on that tough Midwest road trip to Marquette and DePaul. So we're going to get the ruling from the official here in a moment. And that's what we thought, Sky. Two players, they determined, got tangled up. Nothing, no penalties, we're going to play on. So it took a while to come to that conclusion, but at least they did come to the right conclusion. That's right, it took a while, but I'm pretty sure the, the kids in the stands right now, they are enjoying this break, got a <laughs> chance for the DJ to play some more music. And I'm always fascinated by how they know all of the words to every song, every song Chad. And every so song. during this break, while the reps figured out what to do, what to call, I enjoyed watching the kids yes. dance and sing along. <laughs> They had Kids Day when you played here? They did, Pat, and it's a, a tradition since when I was playing, and definitely a memorable day for, uh, for each player as well. I mean, it's fun. 5,000 people here for most of the game, screaming their heads off. Yeah, not many college women's basketball players say so they, they played in front of such a large, a packed, sold-out arena. Not many can say that. Yeah, full house certainly gets the juices flowing to a certain extent. So one more conversation before we can mercifully return to action, and we do. There's a long layoff, about a five or six minute break as they reviewed that. Williams pulls up about 17 feet away and a strong rebound for Raven Farley. You can see Ingram, she's been playing far off of Williams, trying to force Williams to take those pull-ups, but that's not her strength. <laughs> Sophia Widmeyer picks up that foul against the Providence Friars and heads to the bench along with Andrea Cooper. Geary back on the floor. Hoppy taking it to the basket, driving around Widmeyer. And she'll have to earn it at the line where she's an 82% shooter. And St. John's an excellent free throw shooting team on the season. But they've struggled here from the line in the second half. Five point lead. That equals the largest for either team in this game. Nice entry pass to Baskerville, and she's fouled by Farley. And Baskerville essentially just outpowering Farley. She's a little bit quicker with her feet, able to, able to get her feet set and get her post moves, and just right now winning that battle against Farley. More pushing and shoving underneath between Farley and Baskerville. And once again, it's against Raven Farley. That's her fourth. So Emma Nolan has to replace her. Farley to the bench, four personal fouls, 7.58 to go. Nolan just has to play with more discipline than Farley had. Just keep your arms straight up and force Baskerville to make the shot. Don't bail her out by Farley. Double team against Baskerville. Leaves Williams open, and she Williams. lost her footing in travel. Williams that time, I wanted to see her be a little bit selfish and go to the lane herself. She only had England guarding her. She was looking for that pass, and after she got called for that travel instead. Chance of defense coming from the Providence bench. Nice backdoor cut. Nolan couldn't finish though. And then both players hit the deck. And Nolan, after missing the wide open layup, commits the foul. I think perhaps Nolan was not even expecting to be that wide open. 
a layup that she definitely should have made and two points that St. John's perhaps will need as the game gets down towards the end. And also Nolan now picks up four, her four, fourth personal foul. So Nolan has four, Farley has four, and that's St. John's interior presence. England tried to poke it away. Here's Scott pulling up from the wing. And you know what, Nolan has four, but luckily the coach parted out and Nolan has a twin. And so <laughs> it may be the twins' turn to come in this game should Nolan get her fifth foul. We haven't seen Sophia Nolan. Emma's 41, Sophia is 14. Emma can't connect on that three either. underneath against Mary Baskerville. Talk about the bodies hitting the floor in this fourth quarter. It has just been an ongoing battle. I've said it so much in this game, but the post in the paint has been very aggressive and a lot of fun to watch as well. You can see right there Nolan on the ground and Mary Baskerville just tripping over Nolan on the floor and getting called for a foul. So we played three and a half minutes in this fourth quarter. Each team has scored a point. England keeps the dribble. Hoppy to the basket, couldn't finish. Williams with her head up. Throws it back to Scott, goes around Nolan and draws the foul going to the basket as Alyssa Alston took a spill. And that's the fifth personal foul against Emma Nolan. So Nolan done with a point and one rebound. Alicia Cabe replaces her. You can take a look right there. Williams finding it, but... That's a tough fifth foul. I don't and know I that Nolan, Nolan touched her. Yeah, I, I think Nolan did catch her on the arm at the very end and trying to help out her teammate at the last minute and getting caught for that foul just for trying to help, unfortunately. Well, either way, her afternoon is done or let Scott misses on the first free throw. Signs of life from this Parnaseca Arena crowd as this old arena is starting to rock from all the school children in attendance today. Four minutes gone by in the fourth. St. John's clinging to a four-point lead. The school kids did not get the chance to leave with St. John's and watching them win last year. And so hopefully that's seeing if the school kids can see St. John's get a home win today. Meanwhile, the milestone basket for Alicia Cabe, a tough drive to the hoop, and she now has joined the 1,000-point club here at St. John's, committing a foul on the other end, but Alicia Cabe going above 1,000 career points, the 26th player for St. John's to do it. There you go. Thank you for holding <laughs> on to that sign for us, sir. And Cabe, you know, she's had a great career here at St. John's, and had a bit of an injury this season, had to miss some games, but, and also having to play a lot more down low this season, not so much guard play for her this year, and just able to do whatever Coach Tartamella needs her to do on the floor. She's really a team first type player, and exciting to see this young lady reach this milestone. She's worked so hard to get there. And again, 26 players for St. John's have scored 1,000. KB is a member of a more exclusive club. She's the 11th player in program history with 1,000 points and 500 career rebounds. Now she's feeling it from the left wing. Why not? Two buckets in a row for Alicia KB. St. John's has opened a nine-point lead, its largest of the game. Timeout Providence. 5.18 to go, St. John's by nine. Look at a snap, a three-game losing streak.
St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. down a nice long distance jumper right there and the senior right now has seven points in this game she only needed five to get that thousand point and offensively St. John's just has so many different weapons offensively it could be KB for one stretch it can be Hoppy for another and so a lot of scores on this St. John's group in the second half they really almost brought it together pretty well so far. St. John's has a very good offensive team. They score 75.3 points per game. And Providence has gone cold until now with all the three-point opportunity. And Sky, it just seemed like a matter of time before the St. John's offense was going to get on track at this game. That's right. They had no option but not to because, again, they have so many different pieces. They have Austin, they have Hoppy, England, Katie. So many different girls that can step up and score the basketball in bunches. And you can see in the second half, a bit of them started to get their rhythm. But talk about that strong, powerful move by Scott, the 5'10 sophomore, to get that in one against the 1,000-point scorer, KB. Well, we've seen some crazy things happen in the St. John's Providence rivalry in recent years. Some wild finishes, some crazy finishes. That three-point play for Earlette Scott pulls Providence back within six points. Big time defensive possession right now for Providence. They need a stop here. Baby, her third consecutive bucket, and she's hot right now. Oh. And that's something similar to Happy. After Happy scored her thousand point pack, she scored the next couple of buckets. She got really hot, and KB doing the same thing in return. Even to the point for KB, she went to the free throw line, sitting on 999, and missed both free throws. So. It looked like she was really pressing to reach that milestone. Once she did, she hasn't missed since. We have to remember a lot of pressure going into the game when you know you're that close. And once you get it, you can just relax and loosen up and play your game like Hoppy started to do. Strong drive inside for Andrea Cooper. Providence back within seven. St. 
John's offense. Second in the Big East in shooting. Second in the Big East in three-point shooting. Knocked out of bounds off of the Friars. Actually, there's conflicting calls on the floor. Timeout on the floor, media timeout. There's a timeout on the floor. Right now, we're going to say it's St. John's basketball. The officials are going to get together and discuss. 3.48 to go, and St. John's has a seven-point lead. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career-ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're gonna feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. St. John's inbounding out of the timeout. Hoppy had trouble handling it at first and draws the foul against Earl Ed Scott. Now you look at the free throw situation and St. John's has a seven point lead right now. For the season, St. John's a 77% free throw shooting team. They've had trouble from the line today, just nine out of 14, that's 64%. So. In a game like this, free throws could become a factor as Providence tries to put St. John's on the line late game situation. We'll see how the Red Storm handle that. Farley rolling to the basket, couldn't finish. And she's slow to get back on defense. Scott shuffled the feet. A big turnover there for the Friars, their 14th of the game. And right now, Providence could not afford to be careless and turn the ball over. And that one was an uncontested turnover. Scott just has to have her feet correct. Cannot shuffle that pivot, but the refs are looking for that today and have to find ways to get baskets quickly and get stops right now on the defensive end. Turning the ball over an issue the Friars have faced this season. They turn it over 16 times a game. St. John's letting them hang around, though, with a couple of empty possessions. Three minutes to go here in the fourth. They go inside for Baskerville against Farley, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play, and all of a sudden, it's a five-point game. And when Farley does not get it, she does keep her arm straight up, Pat, but then at the last minute, she brings that right arm down, and that's where the ref is catching the foul every time. You must be disciplined and keep both arms straight up the entire time. You bring it down for that split of a second, and the ref will call a foul. And Baskerville, she's smart and she's strong. She will get the and one. 
Raven Farley fouls out of the game, so Farley has fouled out. Emma Nolan has fouled out. Joe Tartamella took nearly the full 30 seconds. He's allowed to send in a sub, and he finally sends in Kadeja Bailey. And so right now, no one with the height of Baskerville or even with the height of Gary on the floor for St. John's. St. John's five are really small. And so this is Providence chance to get that final run and take advantage of their height advantage right now. St. John's is going to need a couple more buckets to seal this game away. Long way to go. Johnny's were up by nine here in the fourth quarter and their lead has been trimmed to four. Alicia Cavey playing the high post right now. Bailey more of a perimeter player. She has the ball in her hands right now. Cavey's had the hot hands and scoring her thousandth. Takes it to the basket. Disrupted by Baskerville. Providence looking to push. Chanel Williams with a head of steam. Lays it off for Baskerville. Tough pass though, and she couldn't handle it. 15th turnover for the Friars. Austin the other end. Breakneck pace. Red Storm stay with the Red Storm. 24 seconds on the shot clock. And Joe Tartamella not liking the flow these last couple of trips down the floor. He calls a timeout. Yeah, talk about the hustle just now by Providence. They did turn the ball over, but they got back on defense quickly. What could have been a fast break layup for St. John's? They were able to stop. Great hustle by Williams. And the question, if you're Joe Tartamello, where do you go with the ball? Alyssa Austin was terrific in the first half. Tiana England was really good in the third quarter. Cavey's come on of late. Hoppy's their leading scorer. So you have options, but no one player has really been in a flow this entire game. That's right. You have options, but for the most part, St. John's is a group that runs to get to the rim and attack the basket. But they're having trouble doing so right now because Providence has their bigs like Gary as well as basketball down there, making it tough for them to get to the hole. And they also don't want to settle for the jump shot. And so it's just hard to figure out exactly what move to make here at St. John's. England trying to turn the corner. Nice pass from KB underneath. The shot is blocked, though, by Baskerville. There's that size advantage you spoke about. Williams drives right at Austin. And an offensive oh, foul. She just put her head down and bowled into Alyssa Alston. And Alston, smart job. She knows that's exactly what Williams wants to do. Williams is going to be similar to Alston. Williams wants to attack the rim and get as close to the rim as possible. That time, Alston was right there waiting for it, taking that charge. And yet another turnover for Providence. That's their 16th. And three of them coming in these last few minutes when they're trying to make a run at St. John's. Webb staying with Tiana England. Shot clock under 10. Game clock under 140 now. Bailey rolling to the basket. Nice touch off the window. A big basket for Kadeja Bailey. You have to love that pick and roll set St. John's runs. They did a great job early in the first half getting up two points off of it, and that time England with a nice pass to Bailey for two points of her own. Andrea Cooper is bumped going to the basket. Alicia Cavey has her hands on her head, can't believe the call. Against Cavey is her fourth. The last thing Coach Tardamella wants his Johnny's group to do is send Providence to the free throw line. He wants them to have to work for every basket, and right now he's really just giving away points if she makes them. She's a 70% foul shooter, but well off on the first. Six point St. John's lead. Cooper needs this second. Empty trip and a good box out by Bailey. A couple of good possessions for the sophomore, Kadeja Bailey, since she came on after Raven Farley fouled out. A smart move by Austin just now. The senior knew to slow it up. Let's try to use up some time off the clock. If you're Jim Crowley at this point, you're thinking if I still get a stop or two, I have a chance to get back into this game without fouling at this point. England's shot was deflected by Baskerville. Bailey's follow no good. Geary grabs the rebound but traveled. Travel. And again, I've said it this entire game, the refs specifically today have been watching the feet, looking for girls that are dragging or shuffling that pivot foot. And again, that time now it was Gary 
getting called for that travel. We've had a lot of traveling calls in this game. We've had a lot of offensive foul calls in this game. Let's reset things for you. You see 55.4 seconds to go. And St. John's will be inbounding a six point lead. Both teams are in the bonus. So any foul from here on out, he will be shooting two free throws. And it's now under one minute time. I think now is the time for Coach Crowley to go for that quick foul, send St. John's to the free throw line and force them to handle the pressure in this loud gym today and knock down some tough free throws. St. John's from the line today, 64%. Providence, 53%. So if you're Jim Crowley, who do you want to put on the free throw line from St. John's? There's not a lot of good options. Kadeja Bailey is probably your best option. She's 55% on the season. But Alston, a very good free throw shooter. Hoppy, she's 82%. Casey's 85%. Kiana England, 74%. So not a lot of good options if you're a Providence on who to foul for St. John's. Yeah, Providence, they just face guard Alston, face guard Hoppy, deny those two from getting the ball and try to get the ball in Bailey's hand or even KB's hand. And that's what Providence has to try to do and get a quick foul. So like you said, putting St. John's on the free throw line, it'll be Hoppy. St. John's can seal this win at the free throw line. In a big second half, this has been for Hoppy. A big day for Hoppy, a big day for Alicia Cabey. Two more thousand point scores added to the list for the St. John's program. Baskerville uses her size inside against Cabey. Cabey, it's back to a six point lead and a quick foul against Alston. Kayla Webb commits it. And Pat, still a lot of time left. Only down by six for Providence, and 42.6 seconds is a lot of time to score six points for Providence. And St. John's, a lot of pressure to make each and every one of these free throw attempts they're going to get. So one for two for Alston. It's a seven point lead. This game was tied at 25 at halftime. St. John's finally started to get some separation midway through the third quarter. And they've led by as many as nine here in the fourth. Inbound lob to Baskerville, and the foul. Why haven't they just been doing that all game? That's right, a nice lot. And you know, I played with Tina Charles, who plays for Liberty now in high school, and it was always so easy to get the ball down low to her. You just throw it up there in the air, and you know she'll catch it. And that's exactly what Baskerville just did. They probably should have been doing it this entire game, because clearly, even still, St. John has not figured out a way how to defend Baskerville in the post without fouling. And St. John's has fouled its third player out. Alicia Cabey now has five fouls. And that time Cabey did keep her arms straight up, but got her with the body because Baskerville, she's smart. She leans in just enough, gets just enough contact to get her consistent so and one. So Joe Tartamella sends in Sophia Nolan for the first time today with 33 seconds to go. That's because Sophia's twin sister Emma has fouled out. Raven Farley has fouled out. And now Alicia Cavey has fouled out. Baskerville misses the free throw. But there's a foul against St. John's on the offensive rebound attempt. 
it's against Sophia Nolan. And yeah. St. John's is in the penalty. So Providence and Earl and Scott have two free throws coming. And that's the main number one thing coaches do not like to see. You cannot allow the offensive team to get the offensive rebound off of a made free throw. And no one boxing out Scott right there. And good call by the ref. And Scott hits the first. We have seen some crazy finishes between St. John's and Providence in recent years. I know I've said it a couple of times, but it's true. Two for two from the line. Joe Tartamella calls a timeout. We've got a one possession ball game with 30.8 seconds to go. So a really big possession coming up for St. John's. That's right, and a big possession for St. John's. And again, St. John's has to play smart. I'm sure Providence is not going to go for that quick foul like they've been doing a couple of possessions before. They're now going to play straight up defense and I would assume for St. John's to try to get a shot. Although it's now pretty even between the shot clock and the game clock. Not much of a difference and so gonna be interesting to watch the, the very end of this game, Pat. And the other byproduct of Alicia KB fouling out that's one of your best free throw shooters who's now out for the rest of the game. KB 85% for the line, so there's an offensive weapon not on the floor. Tartamella doing an offensive defensive switch. He sends Unique Drake onto the floor for this offensive possession. Sophia Nolan back to the bench. That's right, and Drake, she was in the game a little bit earlier, did get a quick bucket, and so might have been a nice smart set for Coach Tartamella. Another ball handler on the floor and they foul Hoppy right away. So if you're St. John's, that's what you want. You want your best scorer, your best free throw shooter on the line, that's what they have. Yeah, I'm looking at Coach Crowley right now. I'm not sure that that's exactly what he wanted out of his player Scott just now, but Hoppy, anyway, getting a chance at the foul line right now. And two huge free throws for the sophomore. 82% this season. And that was the big one because that makes it a two possession game. So Hoppy goes two for two. Cecilia Holmberg checks in for the first time. So how about this? In a five point game, Tartamella has put two players in in the final minute who haven't played the entire game. Yeah, a lot of girls forcing themselves, having to get minutes on the floor because of the foul trouble by St. John's. And St. John's got in this foul trouble because of the obvious height disadvantage they had in this game. Holmberg, a freshman from Sweden. Baskerville, the offensive rebound. Bristow still fighting for it. And it's back to a three point game. And a timeout is called by Tartamella before the inbound. And St. John's allowed Providence to get two offensive rebounds, getting three attempts before getting those two points. And something I know Coach Target always going to talk to them about right now. But right now, Pat, it's all about getting the ball inbounds. Providence perhaps is going to step up in some full, full court press right now and force St. John's to do a great inbound play. If the ball inbounds, it will not be easy. Well, Providence showed on the last possession that they're looking to foul right away, and that was with 30 seconds left. Now you move forward 15.8 on the clock. Friars probably don't have much of a choice other than to foul right away and hope St. John's misses these free throws. Absolutely, and St. John's right here advancing the ball closer to their rim and getting the chance probably just, again, just have to get the ball inbounds first and get ready for the foul. And England having to try to inbounds over Gary, the six foot four long arm span. Let's see how this goes. Gets it into the hands of Hoppy. That's exactly what St. John's wanted. Hoppy just holding it. Clock is down to 11.9 before Webb finally gives the foul. So with 11.9 seconds to go, Providence still has one timeout. Baskerville checked back in. Kevin Bristow checked back in. 
Crowley has three six-footers on the floor, trying to make sure they secure any rebound that there is. But Hoppy, two for two from the line, a nice capper to her 1,000-point day. Hoppy, only a sophomore, but stepping up to this free throw line in crunch time like an upper classman with ice in her veins, knocking down each and every free throw. And this shows the type of special player Hoppy is and the special game she's had today. And big game for her. She's got 15 points. Austin has 13. England has 14. From the scoring perspective, the game kind of played out the way you expected. St. John's had the advantage on the perimeter, their leading scorers, their guards, whereas Providence had the advantage inside. Baskerville, another double-double for her, 12 points and 10 rebounds, and Earl at Scott at 12 points as well for Providence. Yeah, and the game was even, even, even game throughout the entire game for the most part, but we have to remember Providence, they lost Orlando, the 5'10 junior who got hurt earlier in the game, and so, that could have made a big difference for them down the crunch time. Providence will stay in the metropolitan area. They play at Seton Hall, 1 p.m. on Sunday. And St. John's will be back here on their home floor Sunday afternoon for Creighton at 2 p.m. We'll have that game for you right here on the Big East Digital Network. Both of those games you can watch on the BEDN. Friars, after the timeout, inbound in the front court. Back door for Bristow, couldn't handle it. Another turnover for the Friars, their 18th. Tartamella uses his final timeout just to make sure everyone is on the same page here with 10.9 seconds to play. So if you're St. John's, you've got to be happy about how your players handled this late game situation because starting with about a minute to play, Providence kept putting them on the free throw line. And St. John's, for the most part, up until now, has been able to ice the game at the line. Yeah, St. John's, you know, Providence is a young group, not much experience. St. John's came into this game as a more experienced group with these, a lot more upperclassmen. And so St. John's was able to finish this game stronger than Providence. They were able to make make those big plays towards the end, knock down those big free throws towards the end, just showing their experience towards the end of this game. And that may be why St. John's most likely will be able to leave this game with the win. And the crowd has had a great time, as you can see during our time out here. These folks, in fact, are right behind us. We know they've been having a good time because we can hear them all afternoon. Absolutely, and again, every year, this game is always a great game for the kids. St. John's, Providence last year, this same game, and putting on a great show, and I'm sure the kids are going to go back home today to their parents after school and tell them all about their college experience today. England once again inbounding the ball around the 6-4 Geary, and a quick foul by Earlette Scott. Hoppy will go back to the line. The other thing, St. John's has done a really nice job of on all of these inbound plays. They've been able to get the ball into the hands of Hoppy. Absolutely. Hoppy, she's quick. She does one jab and gets to the ball for every inbound. And Providence has been unable to deny Hoppy the ball. She's just been undeniable in this milestone game for the sophomore. And if you're St. John's, that's exactly whose hands you want the ball in down the stretch. So the Red Storm on the verge of snapping their three-game losing streak. They started Big East play with a couple of road wins at Xavier and at Butler, and then came here for a convincing win over Georgetown. But now three straight losses coming into today, starting with an overtime defeat against Villanova, and then losses at Marquette, at DePaul. But the Johnnies are going to put an end to that losing streak, opening up a lead in the third quarter, pulling away in the fourth. And 64 to 58 is the final score. So we saw a lot today. A couple of milestones, and St. John's is snapping their three-game losing. 
losing streak. 64 to 58. The final score. Red score improved to 11 and 7 on the season. 4 and 3 in the Big East. Providence will be at Seton Hall on Sunday, still looking for their first Big East win. They fall to 0 and 6 in conference play. So for my partner Sky Lindsay, KJ Hammond, and our entire Big East Digital Network crew, this is Pat O'Keefe from Carneseca Arena. Post-game reaction coming up next as St. John's beats Providence 64 to 58. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to Carneseca Arena. Pat O'Keefe joined by one of the stars of this afternoon's St. John's win, Alicia KB. First off, on the win, congratulations. Thank you. Able to snap that three-game losing streak in uh, good fashion, pulling it out. Um, secondly, on the milestone, it was a terrific, it's been a terrific four years for you here at St. John's. You score your 1,000th point here today, one of 11 players with 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, really all-around career for you. How does it feel to reach that milestone today? Um, it feels really good. You know, I work hard. I do the little things for this team. And it feels good to get it at home because everybody was excited. And I think this is a tremendous thing. I think I left my mark here. You certainly did, and you still have more work to do. And how about getting back into the win column today? Because you had a really good start to the conference season with those three wins. We know the road trip out to Marquette and DePaul is always tough. So you come in here on a three-game losing streak. To get back on track today, how important was that for your team? Um, it was very important. I think we were kind of losing our swag a little bit with the losses. They were close ones, tough ones. And I think that this win really gave us a booster into going in our next couple of games. We just got to be more confident and play more as a team. Tell me about the way this game unfolded because Providence has a significant size advantage mm -hmm. over your team. And then especially when Farley fouls out and then when Nolan fouls out and you're kind of the interior presence. How challenging was that for you inside against players like Geary, who's 6'4", and Baskerville, who's 6'3"? Yeah, it was kind of tough because I'm not that big, but I play with heart, so, you know, I'm, I'm never going back down on the challenge. So I just play tough. What does it mean to reach this? And, and you have some flowers here. Why don't you pick yeah. these up? Come on. This is a big day for you. You deserve these. What does it mean to you to not only uh, have this milestone day to yourself, but to share it with your teammate, Kodasha Hoppe? You got the 1,000 um, point within minutes of each other. You no, know, it means a lot because when she first got here, I told her we could do big things in this league. So the fact that we got it on the same day together, it means a lot to me. You know, I'm like a mentor to her, and we teach each other things, so it's cool. Now, Sky and I were wondering during the broadcast, were you pressing a little bit before you got the milestone? Because it seemed like once you scored that 1,000th, the floodgates opened and you hit those back-to-back -back buckets. Yeah, it was a little nerve-wracking, like trying to get it because I already knew. So it was a little nerve-wracking, but I just like let it come to me. They said, let it come to you. It's going to happen. So I just played free. Well, congratulations. It's a great milestone, and it probably feels even better coming in a win. Yes, thank you. All right, Alicia KB, 1,000 career points here at St. John's, the 26th player in program history to do it, the 11th with 1,000 points and 500 rebounds. That'll wrap up our coverage today from Carneseca Arena. St. John's beats Providence 64-58. to Johnny's improved to 4-3 and three in the Big East Conference. They'll be back on their home floor on Sunday afternoon against Creighton. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, guys. Good job. Nice job, Ali.